Hi, and welcome to another episode of Casper on BI. Today, we're going to talk about something else. Today, we're going to talk about CDM, Common Data Model. We're going to talk about CDS, Common Data Service, also known as Dataverse now. Um, and we're going to investigate what it actually means. I need to learn a lot about this too. It's very interesting. We, as BI specialists, we've been talking about um, conform dimensions and dimensions that are measured and used by our business users all the time. So it's super important. Um, and to do this today, I have an expert. I have an expert uh, who lives in the heartland of SAP in Germany, uh, Oliver Engels, uh, who I've known for many, many years uh, from the uh, conferences that we've both attended. Uh, and he's an expert in this area. So we're going to listen to him. Uh, uh, on, on the channel and it's amazing to see you again and fortunately of course the world through all the coronas we we missed each other at all the conferences uh, of course SQL pass uh, we usually see each other uh, SQL conference although, although I haven't been uh, in the last few years uh, and I remember seeing you I think meeting you for the first time uh, you were at my first very first session uh, at uh, SQL Saturday in the Netherlands uh, more than 10 years ago uh, yeah, <laughs> talking about yeah. SharePoint and uh, and things like this. Uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's 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 really, really, really a long time. Yeah, it, it makes us old, to be honest. I have to say. Yeah, yeah. but just... I'm I'm happy to be in your show here, and uh, yeah, congratulations that you are doing this kind of format. Uh, I really. I really liked it. Um, YouTube and saw what you already did. Uh, so good, good. The benchmark is high. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not so sure. Uh, I have a lot of uh, competition, but uh, I think uh, what I liked about it, because uh, especially like, for example, the topic is CDM, CDS, or what is now called Dataverse. Everything, the names change continuously. We were talking about this before the show too. Yeah. Um, um, but for me, the really the thing about this show is for me to learn too, because I don't know a lot about it either. I mean, the world of Power BI grows and grows and grows. It becomes bigger and, and intersects with a lot of other things. So last time we were talking about uh, Synapse and now about CDM, CDS. But before we go on, maybe you want to tell a little bit about yourself and your company? Sure, sure. I can do that. So my name is Oliver. Um, as you may already uh, encounter, I'm, I'm not Dutch. I'm German. Um, I'm uh, a Microsoft Data Platform MVP, I think, since is it nine years now. So, um, yeah, we, we know each other for a long time, and I'm also yeah. being a long time uh, Microsoft Data Platform MVP. So, because, you know what? One story I have to tell, because I know this. Um, at that time, you were not with my, not yet with Microsoft, but you were the first guy. I wrote, I, I, I read your, um, your blog on Power Pivot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was, that was the arising of the self-service thing. Exactly. Uh, and you were the. And I said, "Wow, this 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 guy is doing cool stuff on 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 Power Pivot." And one of the things I did in let's say the last uh, 15, 16, 17 years is um, I with with some friends from Microsoft and some friends from the community we. Um, yeah, we established the, the, the German data platform community, and I'm now leading that for also eight years now. So we we are 4,000 people. Um, we are belonging to PASS. We are Germans. We have to build uh, our own club with own legacy, with own uh, tax payments and all these kind of things. And yeah, we are regionally um, organized in 15 chapters and all these kind of things. And I'm trying to lead that. Um, and I'm also trying to do conferences. And uh, one of the conferences in really, really early days, European uh, conferences, which I did uh, together with uh, very nice friends uh, of us, uh, Charlie and uh, Andre. Um, yeah, we. I, I think I, I, I picked your your session on on, on, on Power Pivot. Uh, yeah, the first past uh, Europe with the volcano. Yeah. We probably yeah, should not talk yeah. about that anymore. It, it it was it was really it was really fun. You know what? The 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 volcano conference always uh, reminds me a little bit now at the situation. Uh, if you can imagine, at that time we also had the uh, the need to 
uh, yeah. connect to, let's say, video and uh, putting whatever, Bob Ward and Adam, for example, uh, uh, via video because they were somewhere in Europe and they missed somehow, uh, they tried to get to the conference and then they stopped somewhere, I think it's in Florida, to get over uh, to us and then they we had to broadcast that at, at, at video. <laughs> we even did that with... Uh, on mobile phones from Costa Rica, we had some some speakers there. Um, so yeah, it reminds me now to 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 this kind of stupid Corona time where all of that stuff happens. Also, yeah, video um, and missing um, the conferences. But anyhow, let's press fingers and cross fingers that uh, we get through it and then we can meet each other. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing this for a long time, and um, in parallel, I'm I'm having a, a, a company. 60 people, we are a Microsoft data platform um, um, partner. We are also doing CRM and um, application development. Um, and uh, yeah, we're doing this also for nearly, yeah, I'm an old chap. We are doing this for 30 years now. So um, yeah, quite long. And we are somewhere between Frankfurt and Cologne for all the people who know Germany a little bit, somewhere in, in, in Western um, Germany, yeah. That's what I'm doing for life. Mm -hmm. Nice. And I'll put some links in the description too, to your company and uh, some of the things that yes. you're doing. And I think maybe also that's why we're kind of talking now, because uh, you're kind of living in the CRM SAP heartland, uh, where there's a lot of talk about schemas and models and, 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 and things like this. So today we wanted to talk about, and, and, and honestly, and as I've said before, I want to learn too. So, and because I saw your session that you did in SQL Bits uh, about CDS and CDM, I was like, oh, that was, would be a great topic too. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about, about this. So we're talking about CDS, we're talking about CDM, and now it's called Dataverse. Mm -hmm. In a few words, what are they? And yeah. I can do that. It's, it's always difficult to ask uh, Oliver Engels to do things in a few words, but uh -huh. I try. Um, but what I would try to do here is, before I talk about uh, CDS, CDM, Dataverse, whatever marketing label you put on it, I would like to talk about ODI, because this is something for me, which is, mm -hmm. let's say, from a strategic perspective, it's really, really important that, um, let's say, um, the audience understands the kind of strategy component that is behind the scenes um, uh, with Microsoft here, because the ODI is the kind of initiative, the open data initiative um, that um, Microsoft, SAP and Adobe put together saying, hey, we need to get to a common ground where all our systems can talk um, to, let's say, on a common format um, with each other. And you do not have to, let's say, have so much effort to do any kind of whatever data mapping to understand how to access the data, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a real huge thing. And I'm in, in 2018, um, all these three CEOs one, were, were on stage. I, I think it was Ignite or something like this. Yeah. And I was really, when I, when I heard this, I was really impressed and I said, wow, um, this, is, this is a kind of cool thing. And I always thought, uh, the, in, the, in the second thought, I thought, oh, and SAP is really doing this thing? Ooh. Um, we'll crazy, see. But yeah. if it's like this, then it's really crazy. Um, and based on this kind of open data initiative that says, OK, we want to have a kind of common layer, how our different systems um, are talking and, and uh, persisting data, um, this is something where it gets to my point uh, of notice because one of the things that we are doing in my company as well, we do, um, as I mentioned, we do a lot of CRM things. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of analytical things, but we always combine that. And what happens is, of course, you face the issues of data quality, governance questions, master data questions, et cetera, et cetera. And from this perspective, um, and that was also the part of my, my session at, 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 at BITS, um, I really looked into things like this from the perspective of governance, data quality, what, what, what is possible to achieve here if 
really three big vendors saying, hey, we want to stick together, we want to put that on as common ground, because one of the major issues that you have is most of the time in data quality that different systems are talking to each other and don't understand each other or having some kind of, let's say, conversion problems, et cetera, et cetera. That was the reason why this put me into uh, a very like, ooh, wow, this is cool. Um, to be honest, um, I don't hear a lot about ODI, especially from SAP and Adobe um, uh, in the last, let's say, year. That concerns me a little bit, but I really like what Microsoft is doing because Microsoft is really pushing it. And um, that's the topic of our discussion here saying, okay, what is CDM, what is CDS or D? And yeah. um, it comes out of this kind of ODI um, strategy. And it is the intention of Microsoft saying, hey, I want to build a kind of metadata data construction that gives me the possibility to describe um, what we normally as database people call entities, yeah? um, like, for example, a customer or like, for example, a product um, or an activity or something like this. Um, and let's describe this in a kind of metadata format so that different systems can immediately understand it and that systems who are working with it can take metadata out of this and just use it on their own and and be a kind of meta information to um, the users. And that's, uh, for me personally, that's a, a real cool thing because this is something that a lot of other companies have tried in the past and there were always these kind of initiatives and also um, companies who are selling meta models on, let's say, for the finance industry, for healthcare and so on and saying, hey, these are, let's say, the entities, the attributes that are in there. Um, but this was always like something you have to pay for or something that was quite, let's say, um, yeah, exotic. Um, anyhow. And now with Microsoft, what Microsoft did here with this metadata model, it called the mm -hmm. common data model. And the cool thing is that is open source. And you take it from GitHub and say, hey, let's have a look to how Microsoft is defining a customer, how Microsoft is defining, a, um, let's say, an activity or a product or something like this. Um, of course, don't be naive. Everybody knows, yes, that's the Microsoft view to it. And if you are a CRM guy, you will look into this and say, ah, okay, I know this is driven by the dynamics people. <laughs> yeah, this, these objects or, or these entities are looking like the entities in my CRM yeah. system. But anyhow, it is like giving that Microsoft is taking their information or let's say their their intellectual property to um, and, and supply this to people in an open source, how they define, let's say, the standard dynamic systems. And, and this is already a big thing for me. Yeah? And of course, being open, saying, hey, if you are another ISV or if you are a company you would like to, to support that and you maybe are uh, in a special vertical and you can deliver something um, for this model, um, that's great. You can just publish it mm. into uh, into GitHub and and everybody can can use it. That's something I really like. But this is related to the metadata to the structure. Yeah? And now what Microsoft does, Microsoft on the one side takes this metadata approach and um, the way how the format is, is set up. Maybe we can talk about this a little bit later. Um, but Microsoft used this kind of format and the way how to deal with it now in different systems, uh, different mm -hmm. applications and different services. And, and this is something that makes me like, okay, this is open source. Microsoft is using it in professional products and makes money with it. Fine for me, but it still is something that I see um, 
as an open source approach. Yeah? I have professional software, but the underlying information is open source, and, and that's really cool. Yeah? Yeah. And, and that's what I, what I really like, and I think we will talk about the different flavors where it all pops up um, uh, in, 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 in some minutes. But this is what, what I really, when I saw it the first time, yeah, I thought, whoa, this is really game-changing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So we, we've both seen over the years always SAP on one side and Microsoft on the other side, and the inter the connectivity between them is just very hard. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the, obviously the hope in here is that it will it will be easier yep. to connect yep. the two together. Yeah, especially when when I look into what we did in in in, in earlier days in a lot of. When we are, when we were still, let's say, on prem, uh, and we have SAP systems like R3, um, and you build a Microsoft Dynamics CRM system, or you build any kind of CRM system, you, you one one of your intentions is to get the 360 degree view to a customer, for example. So that means you need to go to the SAP system and and get data out of that. Yeah. yeah. So our favorite integration service connect to this using whatever kind of tools we always used here about a little bit advertising in this part um, to, to get the data out of that. Um, but you had to understand, but what the heck is KNA1? Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, this is the customer table of SAP, okay? Yeah. Uh, and this is something where if this comes to a common data model, you know, what the customer table is and you know how to access it and you know what kind of maybe rules are behind the scenes what kind of um, um, metadata is attached to it yeah? and and this is the great thing yeah and um, this is also really cool and of course microsoft is now using this to say hey let's build some low code no code applications let let's lose and use power apps to connect uh, to something like this yeah? um, and that's 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 a clever idea to be honest that's a clever idea yeah and uh, i really yeah. like I, I really like that yeah? um, and of course when microsoft is making money with it uh, then this this stuff comes into the place where you say okay if i want to build a low code no code application and as a target group i maybe not the guy who is an expert or an mm -hmm. expert of modeling a relational data model or something like this. Yeah? Then the point came in where you say, okay, if there is a service that helps us to do this, yeah, yeah. where I can just take in this, this kind of entity like a customer, and then I can just make my uh, little um, um, application on top of that, that would be a native, simple step to this. And this is where this kind of CDS came in. So mm -hmm. common data service, which is since Monday, I think, Dataverse or something like this. Dataverse, yeah. Um, to be honest, I like, I'm maybe I'm too old for this changing of of, um, of marketing verbs on, on, on top of that. But um, I like common data service because the service defines the common data model. It's a service that takes the common data model as a as a metadata model and positions it as a, a kind of database service that you do not know that it is the database anymore. Yeah? Mm. And, and that's the interesting thing because that is exactly what I just described. I'm a low code, no code person, let's say from a, from a department um, marketing department and I want to do a little customer tracking application or something like this. And I don't want to ask my people in the IT department because they have so much to do with They're other busy. things. Yeah. Um, so in a similar way, what we have with, with Power BI, or let's start with Power Pivot uh, as we discussed this uh, over there, same kind of approach. But here it is like you get you get this kind of model in a service so you can say hey i want to have a customer table and the system gives you immediately a customer table with all the expertise that is already in there from the dynamics um, part mm. now of course i have to pay for this of course there is a kind of value i need to pay microsoft for but 
interesting wise this is something um i i think that helps a lot of people to start with an application and it's not just a customer it could be an activity it could be product it could be whatever you're trying to do with a um, with an with an application and um, yeah that's that's a common data service or what they now called uh, the the data data wars data wars yeah. data yeah so yeah. so it, just to maybe speak back to you so the common data model is it is nothing more than the schema defining the data is it actually a physical service that you can go and buy? Mm, no, it is. It is just a. It is just a, uh, a definition. So it is. It, it just to get a little bit deeper into this, what a common data model, how a common data model is structured. Um, so what you have in here is it is a combination of in 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 the first step. Um, now it's getting a little bit. Uh, more complex, but in the first step, what Microsoft did, they, they thought of, okay, how can I store data in a way that everybody can read it? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that you do not need any kind of proprietary software to whatever, get this binary stream in. Yeah? And that was and is, of course, always uh, a CSV file. Yeah? And then what Microsoft did is in the definition of this uh, common data model, they put a JSON file um, that called model.json, where all the keys that I have in this model yeah, um, are more or less simple CSV files. And in this kind of JSON object, it is described how um, the, um, the file is defined. Because, of course, when you are loading in uh, a CSV file, most Excel users know the problem. You never know what kind of data type it is, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And, and all of that meta information is stored in the JSON file. Um, and um, now in, in, in an earlier, uh, in, a, in a newer version and evolution of um, the whole thing, you have um, a so-called manifest JSON and you have a little model JSON for any, any kind of entities to get really to things like complex models because um, if you just put that in one JSON and you have hundred, hundreds of entities with attributes and so on, it gets a little bit... Uh, mm -hmm. And I think there's also now in, I don't know, I, I, I didn't play with this, um, but um, there's now also the possibility instead of uh, working with CSV files, you now can also work with um, Paquet files in that. Of course, Paquet is already a little bit more tricky because, of course, it's more performant, it is compressed, and all it also has already metadata in there. Um, so it's a little bit uh, of a more advanced format, um, but it gives you also the possibility to to work with, 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 with larger information. Um, but in the nutshell, the 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 common data model is really trying to use with with the lowest functionality approach in terms of CSV and JSON, so that everyone can read it, even with a notepad. Uh, um, you can use this kind of, um, of of data format. And then, so where's the data stored then? Because you need to put it somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so what you can do, you can store. To be honest, you can store uh, the common uh, um, data in a common data model format. You can store it wherever you like. You can even store it on your file server. But of course, um, the let's say the the best place to do this, yeah, when you are talking about files, uh, especially CSVs and JSONs and so on, in a perfect world today, it would be on your data lake. Yeah. So it would be something that you have a cloud storage, you have a blob storage where you can just push this, and yeah, you can really, you can really um, store it there, and all the other different systems can can access it from there. And of course, when you are looking, um, at, I think we will come to that point as well. When you're looking at things like um, Power BI data flows, uh, you will see that um, in the end, the data flow as a the way how Microsoft designed that to 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 be stored on a data lake is exactly in the uh, in the common data um, model format, mm. uh, which is also something where I thought, okay, this means that Microsoft is taking this approach seriously if the Power BI guys um, will use it. Yeah, 
and, and so okay so we have the data stored somewhere mm -hmm. that, that's cdm and what is cds yeah so cds as such um is of the one side um it takes the the possibilities of using the common data model yeah um in an entity but what it builds it is a service. It is a database service. So what it does is um, you as a low-code, no-code application developer, you can just use this service to store your data. And what you can do here is you can build on the one side, let's say, your own, now it's called tables. Before no November, it was still entities. Ah. You can build your own entities and attributes. Like, for example, you, you have a special purpose in your application and you need that kind of special entity. You can build that. But you can also choose from the common data model um, that Microsoft provides you. And you can say, hey, in my, let's call it database, in, in the CDS world or Dataverse world, yeah. this is an environment, um, I can put things in there like, for example, um, these different entities. Yeah? And um, the cool thing about this is you do not have to take care on any things like uh, how is it backup? What kind of uh, availability do I have? It's just a service by, by Microsoft that offers you this kind of storage yeah and of course what microsoft has built is um that you can take the data that is in this service and you can access it by power app yeah so you can build a power app or you can use it in um, a, a virtual agent or something like this or in in, in power automate so all the, the power platform looks uh -huh. into yeah, this yeah. Um, kind of service as an alternative to things like and that's some, something when, when, when we work with, with customers um, and we build power apps, most of the time the, the customers have things in, in place like, for example, they have an Office um, 365 or M365 um, subscription and there they have power apps in there um, and then they start to work. And of course, what kind of possibilities they have uh, to store data. Mm -hmm. It's not the SQL Server. So what they do is they use maybe a SharePoint list or something of like course, this. Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, and now they're building this application and, and um, they are using the SharePoint list and then they get into the trouble when they get even more and more data, when they want to have any kind of relationships between these things, et cetera. Um, and uh, yeah, that that's where we came in and say, hey guys, have a look to um, the common data service or Dataverse, for example, um, because this gives you, for a certain price, uh, a kind of database in the back end that does anything for you, uh, you but you do not have to talk to your um, IT department, you do not have to use uh, uh, Azure SQL database. You can just use this kind of database and all the stuff that happens in there mm. um, is something that Microsoft is doing for you. Yeah? So it's it's on, on the one side, I, plat Azure SQL da database is also already a platform as a service, yeah. Yeah? but this is more like the database as a service thing that um, is in there. And that's an interesting approach. I know the guys from um, from uh, Salesforce had that as well, um, I think earlier, but anyhow, it's something to get this in the, in a Microsoft environment. Um, it's cool because Microsoft had a lot of knowledge um, of databases, and I think they pushed a lot of these kind of competencies uh, into the um, in, into the data worst. And then, then so okay, so so let's say I'm a customer, right? And I and I said, okay, Oliver, I'm, I'm going to go with your company and. Uh, I want to get some this CDM, and but I also want to load some of SAP data, and I want to load some of my own HR system from some I don't know exactly what vendor, and I want to create this data lake with CDM, and I want to be able to connect that from all these different tools, uh, Power Apps, uh, f Automate, maybe even Dynamics. Uh, yep. How would that work? Yeah. So so on the, on the one side, um, Microsoft built on top of of, let's say the um, and I, we have to split that a little bit because when you say I'm working with a data lake, yeah, this is something at the moment 
you are not directly working with um, with a com data service or with a uh, with a data works as such. There are possibilities to synchronize mm -hmm. this. But it's not like this that you can say, hey, um, I'm working with a Power App and I'm using the, the common data service and immediately it writes to the, um, um, to, to the data lake. There are services behind the scenes that are doing this, but you have to configure mm. this. And as soon as you are going into a scenario where the data is on the data lake, yeah, for me personally, it's not really this kind of self-service approach any longer, but it has different strategy. Uh, I will come to that later. But let's keep the, the, the possibilities of um, the common data service or the data worse. Um, here, it is like this for the personas that are just not the, 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 the database people like we are. Um, for them, this kind of area, or maybe they're coming from Excel or something like this, for this kind of area is really cool because um, they, they can work just with the object of the entity and they have a lot of things there that they can use so for example they can have um, uh, some kind of business rules behind the scenes uh, so they can have things like lookups behind the scenes and so it's it's they they do not have to think about oh is it better to use a float or a decimal uh, for my numeric approach this is something that that this service will take mm. it away and um this makes it on the one side very useful, of, on the other side, of course, you have to pay a price for it. What Microsoft did as well is that you can use this, let's say you have, an, you have a, a, a table, or how it's called today is a table, you have a table of a customer in this CDS. What Microsoft built to make this much more easier to approach is you can load data from different systems. Like for example, you have your SAP system and you have your KNA1. You can use um, the, um, you can use Power Query technology to pump that data. Into mm. this. And you can kind of merge them then? Also quite... Absolutely, yeah. And um, you, can, you can build a lot of processes, also self-service ETL processes on, 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 on top of it. In addition, you can also say, okay, I have this kind of common data service um, and I just have a button to say, hey, can you push this into Excel? And then you open up Excel and the system has a little connector in Excel that gives you a live connection to um, the, the common data service. So what you can do is yeah. if you want to do maybe a mass maintenance of your customers and you want to set up a new attribute or something like this and you want to use the power of Excel by drag and drop stuff and, and doing things uh, very fast, you can do this and then you can press publish and then the system will publish this again into the CDS. So you do not need it sounds to like a MDM ETL. from the past. Yeah, it's to be honest, to be honest, one of my questions uh, to, to Robert, uh, you know, your colleague Robert Bruckner at, at the beginning of um, this thing, I said, hey, Robert, is this something I can use as a master data management system? He said, no, 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 no. And honestly, in a lot of projects, we are using exactly this as a master data mm. management system because it gives me the possibility on the common data model to create entities that are standardized. Um, it gives me a, a very easy layer um, for users to work with. Yeah? So it's more to the department than it is to the IT people. Yeah? Um, and of course, when we are talking about a data steward, it's something like uh, the data steward is more in the department yeah. than in the IT should be, yeah? because he knows he or she knows the content. And then they can work with this kind of data. And then we are using Power Apps, for example, to build nice screens with logic so that they can maintain their customer domain or they can maintain their... But uh, it also right. it also means like a lot of this data probably comes from uh, CRM already, right? Like CRM has customers yeah, or and then the, your SAP system yeah. has yeah. products. And so you would enrich them a little bit. So yeah. additional attributes maybe. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And uh, one of the things that is quite interesting here is, of course, as this kind of initiative comes from the Dynamics people, yeah, also, the whole dynamic stack is using this kind of technology. Yeah. Yeah? And this brings it really closer from the application side, so from the business application side. This gives a lot of push into this kind of model. Yeah? We are using it 
from, for example, for master data management or for any kind of data quality tasks. We are even used this for things like if you want to build a little planning application because you need to have somebody who uh, do not have a, a huge planning system like SAP APO or something like this, yeah? and you want to do something yeah, quite quick and easy for um, the departments, we are using exactly Power um, um, Apps and, and CDS or Dataverse um, to yeah. do this. Yeah? Um, the interesting thing here now is what we are talking about is, let's say, the left half of the universe. What we need to talk about is the right half, um, where we think of, okay, how is this when you, you, you just mentioned, okay, I have that data on my data lake. Yeah? And, and this is exactly the point where also um, the common data model comes in place. And um, what we can do here is that um, the, the, the common data service or the data wars has a functionality to say, okay, this entity, is an entity or this table now, I need to get to the right <laughs> words um, in, in, in some way. Um, this table, um, I want to publish this table um, onto, my, onto my data lake. Yeah? And what you can do is um, you do not need to understand um, how this works and you do not need to set up any kind of um, big uh, synchronization ETL job. You can just uh, trigger this in the service, and then the service will push this immediately um, to the lake, so near real time mm -hmm. uh, in the way. And then on the lake, yeah, the way how they store the data on the lake is this kind of common data mm -hmm. model. Yeah. So what I can do here is I can easily work with this kind of data and can um, take this away for any kind of analytical approach. Yeah. Um, in in earlier times, it was like this that um, also Microsoft had this kind of common data service adapter in Power BI, for example, where you can connect to Power BI um, directly to the common data service and you had the possibility to, um, to use, let's say, the table and the attributes that you stored in there, um, you use them in, um, in, in Power BI. But honestly, this is something where I always say, hmm, if I work professionally with my Power BI system, I always want to have that maybe on a on a more open source uh, or on a more um, bigger, bigger storage. So I was always like, hey, it would be quite cool to have that on the data lake. And in the end, yeah. so exactly. So, so, so what about scenarios like, uh, because I've heard, vaguely heard these things, but... It's also possible like to do a, a complete process with ADF, like coming from some system and you write it to the data lake and then with CDM on two. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. So so what you what you can do um, here is and that's uh, that's the, 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 the right side um, of the of the universe, the, the analytical um, um, part of it. What you can do, you have different possibilities. First of all, you have the possibility to um, use, for example, um, Azure Data mm -hmm. Factory, yeah, like you just yep. mentioned. In the Azure Data Factory, um, in um, the data flows, you have the possibility to write the data um, that you maybe retrieve from any kind of other systems uh, that you transform, et cetera, et cetera. You can write that in the CDM format to the lake, mm -hmm. yeah? where there you can even do things like um, you can use this again with other systems. Yeah? Um, you can use this again with another data factory that reads the data in the CDM format, which is also possible, and then uh, process it again. Yeah, yeah. You also have the possibility if you are maybe you 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 are somebody who is using Synapse, yeah? um, and you're using Spark tools in in Synapse. Um, there is a um, a library in um, in Sparkpool, and there's also a, a project in uh, in GitHub where you can get a library that you can use um, with Python, um, and you can take your Spark engine and write and read in the CDM. Mm. Yeah. The differences here is that on the one side you have this kind of common data service or data um, verse that is more end user driven. Yeah. And here you have now tooling that is really IT professional. It's not something you can give um, to um, the people that 
let's say are in the in the in the departments and never heard of Spark or never heard of uh, the Agile Data Factory or something yeah. like this. this is a professional set, and it is also something that goes on scale. Yeah? Whereas the CDS thing, yeah, we we also worked with with a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand records and so on in in CDS that works in a certain way. But um, if you were running 10 million, 20 million or something like this, yeah, you don't do that. Yeah? This is something where the professional tools kick in. Yeah? And, and one of the interesting thing is that um, you can use these, um, these, these libraries or the function of Azure Data Factory um, to produce this CDM format. And the CDM format in the, on the other side is something that when you are looking at Power BI and you have a data mm -hmm. flow, yeah, an external data flow is just a model JSON with the CSV files in yeah. there. Um, and you can just attach on that external data flow or on, on, on this kind of lake and you, you attach it as an external data flow. And this gives you the possibility to say, okay, if I'm... As an IT pro, I'm a data engineer, and I want to produce data for my departments or for my company uh, on a large scale so that they can use it in their self-service approach without having to understand, okay, where the heck is this SAP data and what the heck is this kind of table uh, about? Then they, are, then they can use the, uh, the common data model approach, and then they can use just um, data flows and connect to this and have everything inside. Yeah. Yeah? Um, all the metadata gets sucked out of the, um, um, the common data model. Yeah? They know exactly how this is uh, described. And that's that's a cool thing. Oh. Yeah? And that's something that, for example, um, companies like, like Informatica or so, um, they, um, they also can write in CDM. We, we also have a um, little advertising here. We, we also have a um, a, a software that is a kind of data quality tool that is building knowledge bases. Yeah? Um, that is a, also software as a service. You can get that on, on, on the marketplace. Uh -huh. And um, it's called Head.io. And what we built for Head.io is that, for example, when you do a, a knowledge base, like, for example, you build a knowledge base on customers or on products, etc. What you can do here is you can take, um, we wrote an... Um, in integration service, because um, my buddy Tillman uh, is, uh, did this uh, because he is an integration service uh, fan. He wrote an, an, a, a connector that um, integration service can also write uh, in CDM format. So we, you can even use your old um, uh, integration, SQL Server integration service, your old SSIS to write CDM mm -hmm. uh, uh, with this kind of uh, connector. So. If, if even more people will do this, I think talent um, as an ETL tool has also the possibility to write um, CDM. If they all have the possibility to yeah. write and read CDM, yeah, you're getting to that point with the ODI yeah, that everyone has a standard yeah, and can work with this standard. Yeah? It's similar, to be honest, it's, it's, it's a little bit this with OData, they had this kind of approach saying, hey, yes, we have this kind of standardized way of looking into data and retrieving data, et cetera. Here it's more, we have a standardized format with meta with huge metadata information um, that we can use. And that makes it really, really, really So, So maybe one last question before we get over to Power BI and CDS CDM, but so what about security? So in terms of in terms of security, the let's say the the common data model, I'm I, I'm not aware. Maybe there is, but I'm not aware that there is any kind of security approach um, to this because it's it's a it's file based. Yeah. Um, so you put that onto uh, the lake, and and from there on, it's just the security on let's say um, the file. But with the dataverse thing. Um, you get all the security that you know when you are, for example, working with dynamics, especially when you're working with um, with CRM part of the dynamics. So you get oh. everything like um, the, the role-based access to it, uh, which is related to your AD. You get field-level security, um, role-level security. All of these things you can set up 
The interesting thing here is if you go in a little bit deeper in, into this point, you will always see if you are working with Microsoft CRM over uh, a longer time, you say, hey, this kind of screen about the roles and so on, I know this screen. Yeah? It is, of course, the CRM yeah. stuff. But um, yes, you can you can place a lot of security um, uh, into it. And um, yeah, I think you can, from a security perspective, from a um, qu perspective of, let's say, things like um, business rules and, and, and data quality, you can do uh, a lot of things in this kind of data worse um, thing. But for common data model, I would be surprised maybe somebody uh, in the comments later on will say hey oliver there is a function that you can do this I i'm not aware so and uh, so so maybe to step back a little bit and let's say i want to get started the only thing i need is a mm -hmm. data lake and i can write to it in cdm format but how do i get started with cds like or dataverse is there mm -hmm. a, a... yeah yeah so so what you have to do with 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 dataverse um um Let's let's start it like this because there are many ways of uh, of, of of doing it. Um, so the first thing um, when you are let's say the the normal way would be like you will create um, or you need to create a, a power app. Mm. Yeah? And in this kind of environment, um, you have the possibilities uh, to go into a thing that is data entities, um, and there you have your CDS. But CDS is something, and that's why I mentioned it has a price. Um, you have to have a certain um, specific subscription. So your normal E3 subscription you have uh, is not capable to work with CDS. Yeah? Um, so that depends on now, and now it gets to the nitty-gritty stuff of Microsoft licensing. Uh -huh, yeah, um, always fun. Yeah, you, yeah, that's always fun. So it's depending on what kind of... Um, uh, of licensing, what kind of um, plan you have purchased. So there are things like um, uh, you have an application and you can um, do this like a user per application, or you can have that a user with N applications. And there with this kind of subscription, uh, one is around eight euros, I think. The other one is around 33 euros or something like this per month. Um, and there you get um, the amount of um, this kind of service with a certain kind of storage um, to it addressed. Yeah? And of course, um, the storage is like with the storage in, in, in Power BI, and the more user you have, the more possibilities you have in terms of um, the, the storage. To my knowledge, there is not the model of premium in there, like in Power BI, where you can say, hey, I, I, I buy me a premium and then I can have whatever number of users um, working with the application, um, I'm not sure that this is existing. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe there there was a change in there. But, Things happen uh, fast. This is this is tricky. That's tricky ground. Uh, yes, 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 here. yes. All right. Yeah. All right. So I think I got it. Like CDS, CDM. So now let's talk about Power BI. So how how does CDS yeah. or CDM help me as a Power BI user? Or as a maybe a, a company who runs a big Power BI shop yeah. and... Uh, how can it help my users? Yeah. So when when you're talking about Power BI, um, one of the things that is interesting in, um, in in Power BI is always that, um, of course, you from the process of Power BI, you have to load data, you model the data, and then you visualize the data. Okay. Um, you everybody knows the time you spend on acquiring the data is most of the time. The, the 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 biggest part of it yeah even with power bi and, and, and power query it is much more simple but it still is a lot of work yeah. to do loading the data so yeah. having, exactly yeah um so having things in place like for example let's start with the with the cdm um part if you have something like cdm in place um you get cdm for example through the data flow that means um the CDM model is now the tables in the data flow that you retrieve and you can easily use that in your model. Yeah? So you do not have to think a lot. So, about it. so as a user, I would open up data flows and I would be able to find like my customers or my products. 
for example, yeah, depending where you where you um, where you put that, um, for example, you, you can say, <clears throat> I have a I have a workspace, and um, I have somebody um, from Central IT who um, pushes the whole customer master on the data lake, for example, with Spark or with mm -hmm. PDF, yeah, and somebody is taking it as an external data flow, and then you have that in your workspace. You do not have to take care on um, any kind of loading things, any kind of, let's say, environment part. You're just consuming the entity of a customer through your okay. data flow, yeah? which is absolutely nice because also a lot of times when you are working with, let's say, a specific data, uh, even with Power Query, it is like the more data you have and the more you have to process it, yeah, the more power you need, yeah. so it 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 really takes long, yeah. And it's not like, um, of course, now Power BI is also changing a little bit in the way how, for example, premium works. But in the old days, it was like, hey, if you have a complex data acquisition, yeah, it costs you a lot of resources on your premium. It costs you also a lot of waiting time on your um, on your normal yeah, shared yeah. service, yeah, and. Having something in the background that produces data flows uh, with a highly scaled engine, yeah, so that a lot of people can use that, um, is something very mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah? It gets more interesting when it comes to things like, for example, hey, and we can also address this in something like a data catalog or so. But this is yeah, future yeah. stuff um, that maybe maybe uh, will be um, supported by Microsoft anyhow. Um, but this is something where I see it really um, getting into a, a very good um, functionality where central IT can work uh, and produce the data uh, with a CDM format, and I can just receive and, that um, in, in, in. But uh, so, I can re so I can see it like in two ways, right? We have certified data sets, which is on the other spectrum, is where you already have a data set that you just have to build reports on. Uh, but this data that is sitting in the CDM, is something that uh, mm -hmm. would allow, I yeah, guess. would allow me to use it in data flows, but not just in data flows, right? I can also go into Power BI Desktop and pull data in. Yeah, of course, yeah, of course, you you can you can also you can also use this in in in, in Power BI um, Desktop. For for me, it's like this: the the when you look into something like the the, the format of uh, CDM, it's not easy for let's say normal people to let's say produce it. So they always have to have an adapter yeah. um, that is on the one side standardized um, to use it. So in let's say an enterprise environment, I always see it like this: that that, that you go this kind of. Um, um, data flow route because it gives you the, the the possibility to build this. And when you compare it to the data sets, I think this is really an interesting thing because um, you, you say in a data set, that's the way how I see it normally. It's like I already have this kind of semantic in there. Yeah, I already put things together um, like whatever the different entities, how they relate already calculations in there. You also have in um, in the common data model the possibility to say, okay, is this somehow related to mm. each other? But um, there is nothing like any big thing in terms of my knowledge that, that there is some kind of, let's say, calculation stuff yeah, yeah. in there. This is something that comes on top. But remember, if you put really qualified entities at the bottom, mm -hmm. yeah, somehow you get much easier the possibility and it takes much less time to build a real good yeah. model because you do not have to profile the data up front um, because it is somehow produced um, um, centrally yeah that's let's say if it's if everything is fine if everything works like expected uh, but um, i think this is one of the things that that i really like too and then uh, so what about uh, so uh, so what would you put in it would you put dimensions in it and uh, talking about like snowflakes and would you put dimensions or also facts or everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so what i what i will do here um in the in the in the common data um, um model you can also put facts into this yeah this is something you can do um the point is that the 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 way how you are working with the with the facts um is most of the time these are really huge tables 
Yeah? And most of the time, as soon as you know the keys, etc., this is something where I believe it is quite um, easily um, to consume. The complexity and the, the the benefit of the common data model is especially when you are talking about the entities, which in our case are always like when you go to the analytical yeah. side, uh, they are also always the dimensions that are around the facts. So I normally concentrate more um, with this kind of approach to um, to the um, to the dimensions around this. Uh -huh. yeah. um, of course, you can push your facts as well through the same kind of procedure. Yeah, um, but this depends on how much data you push th through it. Yeah, sometimes it could be better um, that you um, that you are just pushing it um, as a as a flat table through the whole system. Yeah, that's that's what I um, what I think. Um, and one thing that is as well for me quite quite interesting is that. Um, when you are working with these kind of um, dimensions um, and with this kind of entities, um, and you, you mentioned the, the point that people maybe can classify the data sets, et cetera. Yeah? Um, I think there is a huge, 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 huge benefit in here that in this whole ecosystem, all this point of data governance comes more and more into place because with the common data model and the possibilities of storing the metadata to your entity or to your yeah. table, yeah, um, this gives you much more functionality in terms of, um, hey, how do we deal with governance? How can, <clears throat> can we flex something GDPR relevant or something like this. Yeah, this is all stuff that you can build together, and you can you can use this much easier um, if you have metadata available. Mm. Yeah, there's if, if you look into these, let's say um, big data lake uh, um, implementations, metadata is one of the the trickiest bits yeah. in there. How to get this? How to deal with it? Is there any kind of common common uh, methodology to do it. Everybody is doing it differently. Yeah? But if I have something like this common data model where I know, oh, in this JSON or in this manifest, all the, the information is located about the data, yeah? how it is set up, what are the quality things, what are any kind of validation rules for um, the attributes, etc. That's really mm. cool stuff. Yeah? You do not have to invent that by your own. You can just use the format and then Power BI, for example, can use it and, 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 and can build on it. Um, one of the things in the, the second question you had was, um, what can Power BI do with um, with the data wars? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and this is also something that that is interesting because um, when you're talking about this, you, you can you can see it as a when you when you're looking from 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 the power bi side to the uh, to this kind of data war system you normally would say hey this is like a database mm, yeah. yeah and of course there was this kind of special adapter that um, gives you the possibility to to take the um, the data from cds or from the data wars and, and and consume it but now I don't know since when, but uh, I think since May or something like that, um, you also have the possibility to just connect to um, the Dataverse system like a simple SQL yeah. query. Yeah? So you can connect to it with Management Studio. Yeah? I hope it still works. There was some time where they they, they shut it I think down. so. I, th I think I saw something like this. It's called the TDS, right? The Tabular Data Stream. Whatever Microsoft puts in the three-letter yes. uh, to it, uh, I, I don't. To be honest, I don't. I don't know. But um, what I use this for, because this is really uh, interesting, uh, is that, of course, if this acts like a SQL Server, yeah, and you can do it in a in a way that you are using Management Studio to do this. Hey, you can use as well Power BI and connect via SQL yeah. to this, and uh, use all the functionalities um, you have uh, with um, with Power BI working with SQL um, and, uh, to it. And and this is really interesting mm. things, yeah, because this gives you, on the one side, it is that maybe people think, hey, this is something yeah that departments are doing. This is more like end user driven thing. But as soon as it is open up to SQL, yeah, it gets more and more attention from other people saying, hey, 
if they doing if, if I can connect with my sickle tool with my professional sickles tools to that, who this makes me even mm. more uh, even more things possible. Or for example, Power BI is not the only system on the world that is doing reports. Yeah, maybe you want to connect with Tableau or with Click or any other tool to this. Hey, you can do this because it acts like yeah. SQL Server. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's really that's really interesting. And then you can say, hey, I have my little power app uh, where I put maybe some planning information or like what uh, we always do, the maintaining the dimensional data in there and doing some kind of data stewardship on top of that. And I'm using, okay, if I need to, I'm using Tableau to do this kind of visualization. Uh, um, then you can do this. Yeah? And this is, this is, for me, whew, this is also magic yeah, yeah, yeah okay uh, so that, uh, so when we talk about like cds and cdm uh like uh, um, there's a lot of departmental in, uh, installation but do you also see this uh, maybe what i'm asking is where do you see this is going like what do you expect to happen in like maybe one or two years like do you think it's going to be like yeah. more organization-wide used because i think right now i think it's mostly departmental or is it already yeah. organization-wide to be honest, from the, the, the way how you can use it, and I think there are also some use cases at Microsoft that are using it really on an enterprise right. level. Yeah, because it, it's it's nothing that 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 stops you, um, for example, to to scale out this application to let's say a thousand users across the globe. Yeah. yeah, because it is a service. It works on the Microsoft infrastructure. Yeah. So from a scale out perspective, I think. Um, this is not the case. I think the in the in the environment of people who are working with power apps, this is already something that a lot of people will look at it. Um, in the let's say it like this in the data platform uh, community, I don't know how many people are really aware of this kind of service and see it as a professional yeah. service. Yeah. Um, I think this will change definitely because there will be even even more and more things like uh, anything that is already something like, for example, uh, an application lifecycle management framework on top of Power Apps and, and, and CDS or Dataverse yeah, that already exists in a certain way. Yeah. Um, that's something that also will be more and more involved. But my personal hope, to be honest, and that goes back to the ODI uh -huh. thing again, um, is that um, what I would wish and what I would see as a good step in the way how you deal with data is that um, the whole ecosystem of CDM on Data Lake and um, the CDS system gets more and more closer to each other. Even there is this kind of synchronization mechanism between these two, it's still, there's still a kind of gap between it and still somehow disconnected. Yeah? Um, and there's also the point that, for example, when you are going with um, with signups and you have this, this nice signups um, studio where you can look into your Power BI report and um, you can also see the, the data set is, that yeah. is there. Yeah. My intention is uh, to say, hey, guys, this is something. I create, let's say, ADF, and I say, hey, push this, please, as uh, a data flow directly to the user, and I can immediately use this in a data set in, in, in Power BI seamlessly without any kind of disconnect saying, hey, I have to do a external data flow, blah, blah, blah on that. Just one stream where everything is in there and where you can differentiate between, hey, this is what the data engineers are doing yeah? and the data engineers are pushing that thing, doing it at scale, etc., and pushing it into the direction to the self-service people because mm -hmm. yeah. I think this will have a lot value. And the other thing on top of that is what I just mentioned to say, if we have CDM, if we have all that metadata, please, Microsoft, take the data catalog and just consume it and put all your efforts into things like, hey, do we have a, a DQS system? Do you remember mm -hmm. that? Oh, yeah. DQS? Or did you already no, forget no. it? <laughs> or a master data management system? All right, cool. I think, uh, I mean, I've learned a lot.
I know what CDM is. I know what CDS is. I know how to use it. No, it's not CDS. Dataverse. Right. It's yes, Dataverse. 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 I know what CDM. But, but maybe after Christmas, maybe after Christmas, it's it's still cool. No, CDM. no, no, no. I think now they're gonna stick to it. I already saw they updated all the documentation too. So. Uh, I know. So you know, all right, and and with that, I would. I would like to thank you again. As I said, I've learned a lot. You're welcome. Uh, it was very interesting. And thanks, thanks a lot, Oliver. And uh, I'll see you next time. You're thank welcome. you.